So you've got an RTX 3060, and you bought God of War on PC because you want that ultra crisp, awesome performance 4K 60 FPS experience. Well, at max settings, we can barely maintain even 30 sometimes. So what can we do to improve performance? Well, let's go into our settings. We're going to go over to display. We're going to turn on DLSS. We're going to use performance mode. That's going to bump our internal res down to 1080p. I know. But, hear me out. We're going to set our graphics settings on custom. Texture quality on high. Model quality on original. Model quality, unfortunately, eats up a lot of performance. It deals with Kratos and all of the other characters in the game. And, unfortunately, it's just too performance heavy. And isotropic filtering on ultra, of course. Shadows on high. Reflections also on high, atmospherics high, ambient occlusion high. You know what? Let's try textures on ultra. Let everything load in real quick as everything refreshes. Now inside here with Brock, we do get a performance dip under 60, but of course I'm recording. If I'm not recording, it's around 58 to 62 FPS. So let's head outside. Okay, now we're heading into some atmospheric effects. We got shading and lighting. 60, 61, 58, 60. Looking pretty good. We're maintaining 60, we're doing just fine. Doesn't look too bad, right? Now if we go into our settings and we turn up our DLSS to balanced or even quality, Let's try quality since it's 1440p. Same settings. And we're down around 50-ish frames per second. So not quite what we're looking for. And in order to maintain 60 at this setting, we would have to bump some settings down quite a bit. Let's try textures on high, shadows original, everything else original, and isotropic filtering on ultra. Let everything load. And we're still in the mid-50s, probably mid to upper, while not recording. So, still, not quite 60 FPS. And this is in line with the consoles, but with better and ISO. And that's why I recommend sticking with performance. I also use DLSS sharpness set to 25. I find that 18 to 25 gives a sharp enough image. But going above that, you start to see a lot of... Uh, a lot of grain and over sharpening in motion on edges and stuff so don't turn it up too high unless of course you like that kind of thing in which case go nuts so I'm gonna turn these back up and we got a 60 FPS experience alright I'm gonna jump this forward to some combat and we'll see how everything runs Did you bathe yet, kid? I still can't read these. Alright, so as you can see, we're doing just fine. Indoors, it's especially a little bit easier on the GPU. But this is what you can expect for a good portion of the game since a lot of it takes place indoors and in corridors. There are sections outside, but... That experience should be locked to about 60 FPS. Alright, so let's move on to the next game. So, right now, as you can see, we're maintaining basically a full 60 FPS. Little dips here and there into 59, 58 territory, but overall pretty good. The image doesn't look too bad. Slightly over sharpened, you might notice. A little bit grainy on the edges. But let's take a look at the settings. So here's what we got. 4K. 60 Hz. 
custom settings, texture filtering on ultra, because that's your anisotropic filtering, shadows on medium, vegetation medium, environment on high, water on high, terrain medium, volumetric fog on high. Going lower creates this kind of crosshatch effect that I think looks really bad. But ultra is too taxing, so happy medium on high. These are on a preset because of AMD's built-in settings. We have Fidelity Cast on and Variable Rate Shading on. If we go over to Advanced Settings, we can see that we have Super Resolution on, set to Quality Mode. If we go down to Balanced, you can see that we get better frame rate, but the image looks a bit soft. There's this bit of uh, rough edges on objects. Slightly better frame rate, 4 to 5 frames per second better, but I think it looks a little too muddy. So we go back to video. Let's try setting it to high quality, or ultra quality. Looks alright, but our frame rate tanks into the 50s, and some of the edge work and the textures look over sharpened in a bad way. It's not too bad, not too terrible, but to maintain All 60, we'd have to turn settings down. down to around medium. We turn super resolution on to quality, right? Quality settings, ultra texture filtering, shadows medium, vegetation medium, environment on high, water on high, terrain medium, volumetric fog high. FX cast on and variable rate shading on. Like I said, it's not perfect, but it does look pretty good, especially compared to setting your resolution scale to 70%. Setting it to 80% does look sharper, but then we have to turn settings down to like medium and low to maintain a 60 FPS target. So now we're going to jump into combat and see what happens with the frame rate. Yeah, take that. This is my castle now. Got to be careful here. Books. All right, let's cause some havoc. Oh, can't go that way. What's this? The key. Ooh, the key. All right. Me Juan's uranium. Gani, watch out! They've called back their patrols. Hey, you mean this wasn't everybody? Ah! What the heck? Alright, this is what I was hoping for. Get a bunch of stuff going on. Put out the fire, come on, come on. Ah. Oh. Well, we died. <laughs> Alright, here we are in Halo Infinite. And we've got the settings that we used during my review of the 3060. 4K, maxed out settings, right? And we're getting mid-30... High 20s FPS, not amazing, right? If we go into the video settings and we use the low preset, take a look at performance, we're still not hitting a solid 60 FPS. We're in the 40s, sometimes up to 50. So the only other option really is to use the resolution scaling. So let's go ahead and bump this down to 1440p. And again, I personally prefer to use the desktop resolution settings, but 
this is an easy way to get some performance. So 1440p, and we're getting mid upper 70s, low 70s, there we go. That's more like it. Okay, but we're still on low, so the game doesn't look amazing. Let's try the medium preset. Let's turn texture filtering to ultra, because that's your anisotropic filtering. Everything else on medium. Animation quality auto. And we're getting mid 50s into the 60s. Not quite a solid 60, but decently sharp image. Right? I feel like this is an okay balance. It's not perfect. Let's see if we can find some combat. What's up? Yo, what now? Okay, so we're not quite hitting 60 FPS. What I recommend doing is turning your scaling down to 50% so you're playing at 1920 by 1080. Now we're getting a much smoother frame rate. So we might be able to turn some settings up a little bit to kind of bring up that image quality a little bit. Let's go ahead and try the high preset. And of course, turn texture filtering to ultra. There we go. Mid 60s. Mid 70s. Textures look decent enough. The image isn't as sharp and crisp, but I feel like this is a pretty good balance get decent shading, an okay level of sharpness, good reflections, Still getting dips into the high 50s, but again, I'm recording. If, if I weren't recording, this would be a solid 60. I've run through here a couple times just to see what performance was like. Ooh. We're in trouble. Oh no! You want to go? Huh? Wrong button. <laughs> As you can see, I'm a Halo master. Greatest there ever was. <laughs> you get the idea, right? Pretty solid. If you're not recording, you could probably turn up another couple of settings, like, uh, let's see, like geometry quality, back up to ultra, texture quality on ultra. Let's see how that looks. All right, we got some of that texture quality back. The rocks look more rocky. Trees look more tree-y, right? <laughs> Still random dips into the 50s, but it's not bad. Look, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're gonna say. It's not true 4K gaming. And you're right, it's not. It's basically 1080p gaming slash 1440p gaming, depending on the resolution scale you're using in-game. But it is very good at what it does. It's quiet, it doesn't use a ton of power, it runs fairly cool, and, like I've mentioned before, my system temps across the board are down 10 degrees Celsius compared to the 3080 Ti. That cannot be overstated. That is very important if you're trying to build a system that you don't need or want to water cool. And yeah, you don't necessarily need to water cool a 3080 or above, but those cards run hot. I use a Liquid Freezer 2 360mm for my CPU, and it still runs hotter than I'd like. If you go back through and look at the reviews and the games that I've run on the 3080 Ti, you can see that the temps are much higher across the board compared to the 3060 that I'm using or even the 3060 Ti that I had reviewed previously. Considering the current market, if you can get one of these at or near MSRP, like the other GPUs that may or may not be available, I say go for it, as long as you've got the budget for it, 
and this would be an upgrade for you. If this isn't going to be an upgrade for you, then pass. If you'd like to keep up to date on Hardly Tech news and whatever I'm working on currently, head over to Hardly underscore Tech at Twitter. I'll see you there. In any case, I appreciate you all watching. Thank you very much. And if you like this content, consider hitting that like and subscribing all over that button. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.